Okay, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a collar grid, um, something that you would use in this kind of wing root junction for an overset mesh. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to provide boundary layer resolution not only on the wing root, but also on the body, kind of where these two would connect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some connector defaults. I'm going to set a connector dimension default of 61. And then I'm going to select the upper surface and lower surface database entities and create structured. So I've got structured selected up here. Create structured domains on those database entities. All right, and then I'm going to toggle off the view of the database by going to view and toggling off show database. So there are my domains, structure domains on the wing root. Now, I'm going to close up the trailing edge here. So you'll notice that there is not a domain on the trailing edge. So I'm going to quickly create that. Um, I'm going to set the dimension, the default dimension to 11. And again, basically what this is doing is any connectors that I create are going to have this dimension. So I don't have to dimension them after the fact. I'm going to create two point connectors. So up here in the toolbar, I'm clicking on two point curves. And I'm just going to connect these two nodes together. And I'm going to zoom in to the root and do the same thing. So I'm going to connect those two nodes together. And then what I'm going to do is zoom out and just using the uh, connector mask, toggle that on and using inclusive selection, holding down the shift key and using the left mouse, mouse button to drag a box. I'm going to just drag a box so it selects all of the connectors that are inside that box. And so basically when I do that, you'll notice I'm dragging that around both of those small trailing edge connectors I just created and those longer trailing edge connectors. And those are the only connectors that are included in this box. So then all four of them will get selected and I can just come up here and click this button in the toolbar that says assemble domains. And when I click that button, if I zoom in here, you'll notice that a structured domain was created on that trailing edge. Okay. Now just so it's a little easier to see, I'll toggle on the domain mask, select all the domains and change the display type to hidden line. It's a little bit easier to see here. Okay, so there are my domains on that wing root. Now I'm going to set up my spacing constraints because that's really the most important part of this process. So I'm going to select the spacing constraint mask. And the first one I'm going to set up is the leading edge. So I'm going to grab all of the spacing constraints. And these are at the ends of the connectors for the leading edge. So those are those four spacing constraints are going to control the spacing of those grid lines at the be at the uh, the leading edge of this wing. Sorry, leading edge, not trailing edge. If I said trailing edge, okay. And I'm going to set that value to two e to the negative three. Okay, and that's going to be just whatever units that you happen to be working in. Okay, so by doing that, I've I've kind of clustered points towards the leading edge to help resolve that curvature. I'm going to do the same thing at the trailing edge. So I'm going to select those two. You'll notice I just did a drag to select those two and then hold down the control key and do a drag to select those two. So I've got four at the trailing edge as well. And I'm going to set those spacings up to be one E to the negative four. And the reason I'm doing that is if I zoom in here, I'm just going to zoom into this corner is this spacing on the trailing edge. Okay. Kind of this spacing right there needs to be equivalent to that spacing. So basically these two spacing constraints should be the same. So that's why we used one E to the negative four because 11 points across this trailing edge is gonna give us a spacing of one E to the negative four. So now I have a nice smooth spacing around that convex corner and that's really important. Okay, the next spacing I'm going to fix is the spacing uh, moving towards the root and towards the body. So that spacing, and then there's a couple of spacing constraints back here on the trailing edge as well. So those two, as well as this one. And this is gonna, again, cluster points towards the root. And I'm gonna set that value to five E to the negative three. And you'll notice it didn't change much. Basically what I'm doing is I'm fixing it to a known value because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna extrude these connectors normally and constrain them to the body of the aircraft. And I want that spacing that I specified to be the same spacing that I've just specified here. And again, that's why I have a nice, consistent, smooth distribution of points from domain to adjacent domain, okay? 
Now I'm going to turn back on the view of the database so you can see what we're going to do here. So those domains are set up. All the spacing is good. I'm going to then select the connector mask and I'm going to pick the connector on the, the upper surface, the connector on the lower surface, and then zoom in here and get that connector on that trailing edge. And then go to create, extrude, normal. So we're going to do a normal extrusion. And I'm actually going to toggle on assemble special and delete all edges and define this edge myself. And I'll explain why in just a moment, but I'm going to select the upper surface. I'm going to come in here and select the trailing edge and then the lower connector. Okay, the lower surface connector. And you'll notice that now the orientation is going counterclockwise and you'll notice this little yellow dot here at the leading edge. Basically, that's going to be the start of our edge and that's where we're going to have a connector, a branch connector emanating out from, not from just a point near the trailing edge, but right here at the leading edge. So that's how you can actually control where that branch connector is going to be created. So I'm going to go ahead and save that edge and click done. And then I'm going to go to the attributes tab and set up all the attributes for the extrusion. Now the first thing that I really want to set up, it's a little bit out of order, but the orientation is all messed up. So I'm going to orient this thing in the negative Y direction just by clicking negative Y up here in the toolbar and then go to the orientation frame and click set plane. So that sets it to the view plane and then you'll notice that the normals are pointing inward. I need to flip those. So click flip and now they'll be pointed out. Okay. And while I'm at it, let's set, set the uh, shape constraint. So expand that frame. And instead of free, we're going to set it to database constrained. We want this extrusion to be constrained to the fuselage of the aircraft. So I'm going to click begin and then click on the aircraft fuselage and then end and set domain shape. Okay. So that's going to constrain the extrusion to the fuselage. All right. Now I'm going to come back up to step size and we can start working through this. So my initial spacing is going to be 5 e to the negative 3. And again, that's the exact same spacing that we specified for this connector as it leads towards the root of that wing or towards the fuselage. And basically that means the spacing that we're using, this initial spacing as we march off of this, as we're constrained to the fuselage, is going to be the exact same spacing as that that uh, that we use on these wing domains. So we're going to have a nice, smooth, continuous spacing on those adjacent domains. And then my growth rate, I'm going to set that to 1.05. We're going to get a nice, smooth extrusion. And then the last thing I set is going to be a smoothing parameter. I'm actually going to decrease the volume smoothing to 0 0.4. And volume smoothing controls kind of how how the volume of the elements changes as the extrusion progresses. So higher vo values of volume smoothing are going to try and equalize the volume of all of the elements on that front. Lower values are going to retain kind of the original spacing of that front as it marches out. So I've decreased this just a little bit to prevent any sort of um, billowing of that front as the extrusion progresses. So I'm going to run that for 20 steps. And I get this nice database constrained extrusion. So we'll click OK. And I'm going to turn off the view of the geometry and then select all those domains and just render them in hidden line mode so you can see. And basically what I was getting at is that initial spacing for that extrusion is the same as the spacing here on these wing constrained domains. And again, so we have nice smooth continuity and spacing on those domains. And in fact, if I grab all of the domains and go to examine the area ratio, you'll notice that my maximum area ratio is 3.86. Less than 4 means that I have a very, very smooth surface mesh, which is a, a prerequisite for a nice volumetric extrusion. You want a nice smooth area ratio on that surface. The other thing that I like to look at is the maximum included angle. In this case we're at 136 which is great. That gives us an idea of how skewed or warped those elements might be. Alright, so we've got all of our domains. We've got our root domains. We've got our fuselage domain. Now what we need to do is create that collar block. And we're going to do that by extruding all of these at once. So I'm going to select all of the domains and go to create extrude normal. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to click on assemble special and delete all the faces and I'm going to define this face on my own. So I'm going to select the upper surface, 
the trailing edge domain, the lower surface domain, and I'm gonna use that selected link. So it picked that link for me. And then I'm gonna select the fuselage domain. And this is the topology for that extrusion. It's good. We're gonna save that face and click done. Okay, now you'll notice right away that the extrusion is pointed in the wrong direction. It's pointed into the fuselage. Um, the wing extrusion is pointed into itself, so we need to flip that. So we'll go ahead and flip that. And then I'm gonna set up my spacing. So my initial spacing is gonna be one e to the negative five. That's gonna be your boundary layer spacing. Growth rate, in this case, 1.15. Nice, smooth growth rate. And then I'm gonna come down into the smoothing parameters, and I'm gonna increase my explicit smoothing to two and two. So this is three-dimensional, so there are two values that you need to specify here. And then implicit four and four. So the reason I'm changing those, these values, the explicit implicit smoothing are going to work to smooth in the transverse direction. Basically, they're gonna prevent any slope discontinuities that are on the surface in the initial front from propagating, okay? So by increasing those, that's what we're doing. And the implicit value needs to be double the explicit value, just remember that. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decrease the volume smoothing to 0.3 again to prevent any sort of billowing or to reduce the amount of billowing uh, that occurs on that front. So I'll get a nice smooth front as we extrude. Okay, so all of this is set up. I'll go to the Run tab and I'm gonna run this for 60 steps and click Run. And you can kind of see the progress down here. Okay, we'll accept that. And I'll turn back on the view of the database. And you can see there is our collar block. So that's how you can go ahead and create a collar block. And again, really one of the things that you're shooting for is a nice smooth surface grid because that's gonna allow for a, a nice smooth volumetric normal extrusion. So I hope that helps. Thank you very much.